Hello everyone, this is Lindsay with Lindsay's Craft Studio and today we are going to be painting this little lookout painting. So this is a cute painting of some mushrooms on a tree and this little frog is just the cutest thing. So I am really looking forward to painting this with all of you. So unfortunately, once again this Wednesday, I'm unable to appear for a live class at my scheduled time. So I thought instead of rescheduling, that I would film this a little bit early and release it to you guys a little bit early, kind of like a gift for putting up with me the last few weeks of me having to reschedule. I do appreciate every single one of you that watches, and I'm sorry I can't be there with you at 6.30 tonight, but I figure a little early is better than never. Right? Right. So uh, this was supposed to be last week's class. This is rescheduled to this upcoming Wednesday, May 3rd at 6.30 on Facebook Live. So join me for Mare Meadow if you can. This was last week's class, so you can always go back and watch that. I do ask for a $5 donation per participating household. So what that means is I don't care if you have 30 people there, if you have three people there, or if it's just you. I do ask for $5 from everyone who watches just because it takes a lot of supplies to come up with all of these different things that we do together. And if even two of you donate, I will have paid my overhead for today for the canvas, the paint, um, you know, and, and the thought process of coming up with this painting. Obviously, it would be nice if more of you donated, but even just two people. So let it be you, you know, don't wait for someone else. Uh, it all is very appreciated. And like I said, it goes toward continuing to come up with stuff like this. And you can see some of the paintings that we've done this spring so far have just been so super cute. So if you've never painted with me before, you know, go back and find those, watch them, you'll enjoy them. And I will have summer paintings coming up soon. I think I'm going to take the month of May to generate some new art. So if you have ideas about what you want to see me paint, let me know. I'll do my best to incorporate that into my design going forward. So here we go. We are going to start little lookouts. Let me just move my sign there. So because this is not a live class, you can go back, you can rewind, you can pause, you can take as much time as you want to. So I am going to move a little bit more quickly than I typically do in my live classes. If you find that you're getting lost or frustrated, just give it a pause. Take your time with the steps. You can always come back to it, I promise. Okay. So... For brushes today, I would recommend that you have a square brush that is a pretty decent size for your background. If you're using a large canvas like this, you might want maybe a one inch thick brush, but your half an inch thick is fine for a nine by 12 if you're using what I'm using for my secondary painting here. You're also probably going to want a rounded brush in that same size range, something, a filbert, something with a nice point on it. Uh, for doing the mushrooms and the leaves. And then, of course, you are going to want a very small brush for doing the details on this teeny tiny frog. So you could get away with just using three brushes for this class. Now, I always like to tell everyone that at Lindsay's Craft Studio, which is what you are currently watching, I want you to use what you have at home. So if you have a favorite set of brushes and they don't look like mine, that's okay. Use what you have don't go out and buy something special just to paint. Painting should be enjoyable, not expensive. For colors for today, our color palette is very, very simple. We have white and black, those two colors you use in pretty much every painting that you'll ever make. We have your standard chocolate brown. We have some golden ochre, which you can really see in the mushrooms here, but you can make your mushrooms whatever color you want to. In Connecticut, where I live, most of the shelf mushrooms are kind of this yellowy, whitish color. But if by you, you have some that are red or burgundy brown or even pure white, feel free to mix up the colors on those. Uh, my frog is a combination of your primary color green and a limeish green. And we also have some bright yellow just in case you wanna mix a couple of different values for your mushrooms. These are the colors I used. Feel free to customize. One of the ones I wouldn't negotiate on though is the black because you really do need it to make a difference compositionally in this painting. So part of the reason this tree bark looks so cool is because we do start with a layer of black to begin with. 
lay that down nice and thick, and then we're going to put our tree texture over that. So if you saw my cat go by the screen just now, his name is Oliver. He pretty much crashes every single one of my classes, especially the ones, oddly, where he can tell that I'm only talking to myself. Apparently, there's a difference in my tone when I'm talking to myself versus an audience. So he has a tendency to do more drive-bys than usual if it's just me. So um, he's, he's pretty, pretty cute. So I've started by picking up my biggest brush and I'm going to make a wiggly line. This is going to be the edge of your tree here. And you want to take up maybe two thirds of your canvas. So everything to the right of that line that you make is going to be solid black. And put it on so that it's nice and dark but not so thick that it's gonna take a really long time to dry. Fortunately, I have a tendency to recycle all of my canvases. So this would be a great painting since there's so much visual texture. If you have a painting that maybe you painted at another class like this and you're not super thrilled with and you've been wondering what to do because you don't wanna throw it out, you can actually turn it into a completely new painting by painting over it with a thin layer of white and then just participating in this class like you normally would. Because by the end of class, you're not even gonna know that there was another painting underneath there. There's so much texture going on between the mushrooms and the tree. So just really quickly filling this in with black paint. And again, if you need more time, feel free to pause. All right, so after rinsing out my brush, I'm gonna switch my attention to the other side of my canvas here. That is going to get just a layer of regular green, and my green is kind of on the thin side. I had some water in my brush when I first painted this other painting, and frankly, I like the way it looked. So when I rinsed my brush just now, I didn't dry it off between. And that's how you get that kind of translucent effect with the green. And the reason we want that is because this is supposed to look like leaves and trees. So if it's not a solid green block to start with, it's going to look a little bit more realistic when you start putting those textures in there. Go right up to the edge of your tree trunk. Normally, I would be taking more time and care to go right next to it and not overlap. But like I said, this is kind of a speed class today so that you guys can paint at your leisure. And it isn't a massive file size on the Internet because YouTube does put some restrictions on those. And that's how we're streaming today. So I leave all that texture. It looks kind of chunky and blocky. I like it. If you don't like it, you can take your time and make this a really smooth color. but we are gonna add some texture on top of this right now while it's wet. So wait and see what I do first before you make a decision about whether you hate it or not. So I'm taking my brush, I'm mixing a little bit of black and a little bit of green together, and I'm just doing some random strokes into the paint. Left, right, up, down, all directions. And I'm leaving some of that green showing through. But that's going to create kind of a shadowy area on the bottom of our forest over here. And then along the upper side, I'm mixing some green and some white. And I'm going to do the same thing. So really quickly, this is creating a ton of dimension. And we didn't have to sit there and paint every single leaf, which is the most important part because there are a lot of leaves on trees. <laughs> you don't realize that until you start painting them. There are a lot of leaves on trees. So anytime we can cheat, we do at Lindsay's Craft Studio. I make it as easy for you as I can. So already we have some beautiful texture going on, but we are going to up the ante by texturizing our tree trunk. So in this initial painting, I kind of skipped around. I left a bunch of different areas where um, 
you know, I wanted the mushrooms to be and the frog to be. So if you'll notice, there's some areas where the paint kind of skips. I don't think I want that in this painting. I want this painting to be prettier and improved upon over the last one. So these stripes of texture for the tree bark are actually brown, black, and a little bit of white to create that typical ashen tree color. And kind of follow your heart on this. You know, if you first put that brush stroke down and you can't really see it, you're going to need to lighten your paint up a little bit. You don't want it to be so light that it looks drastically different. So I'm using the width of my brush to my advantage. I'm kind of wiggling the brush and I'm putting it right next to the line that came before. And I'm letting the paint kind of come off of the brush as it wants to. I'm not worried about making super solid lines because this is supposed to be bark texture. So if it skips a little bit, this is the one style of painting where it's okay if you have chunky, streaky paint. So already I am loving this. If your paint is not skipping at all and it's driving you nuts, try pressing with the brush a little bit less. And try not to have very much paint on your brush when you're doing this. Because if you have a ton of paint, it's, it's not going to give you any gaps in the color. It's just going to be a big, long, blocky stripe, which we don't want. We want nice visual interest. So already, to me, that looks like a tree. If you want to go a step further, you could add a little bit more white to the color that you're working with and go into every single stripe and add an additional little pop of color. I'm moving very quickly with this because you don't want to completely paint over the color that you already painted. You just want maybe a little pop of white. And it's not pure white. It's kind of a tawny fawn color it makes me think of baby deer so that to me is absolutely beautiful so we want this to dry and set up nicely uh, before we start to do our mushrooms and things because if we start to put white over this now with the black and the browns being wet you will not have these pure colors and these pure colors in your painting they will kind of muddy together. So we are going to switch over to a round brush and some more black paint and we're going to start putting in our skinny tree. This just kind of makes it look like forest. You might say to yourself, well in your example painting it looks like it's light brown. Well that is true and we are going to change up the color a little bit once we have it on our canvas, we're gonna, we're gonna play with it. Because just like we did with the tree trunk, the more different layers that you add to these branches of color, the more dimension your painting is going to have. And if you feel like you're getting really thick branches, like I'm definitely getting really thick branches, I don't mind because this is the second version of this painting, so it's okay if it's not perfect. Um, if it's bothering you, switch to a smaller brush. But I also really want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So that's part of why I'm using a bigger brush this time around. And you can see my trees don't match up to one another. That's totally fine. Every tree in the forest is completely different from its neighbor. So um, it's okay that they don't match. We paint with our heart here. So I'm mixing together a little bit of brown and a little bit of white and a little bit of black. And just like before, I am going to add a little bit of texture. And I thought I could add it with a small brush, but I think I need to go back to my round brush because the small brush was just kind of cutting through the paint, not actually putting it on top of the branch. And the same thing, you want to let the paint kind of skip off of your paintbrush. 
You want to leave a little bit of black along the bottom side of each branch so it'll look like you have some shading there. And you can take it a step further. You can add some white if you would like to. I'm not going to worry about that. The next little piece of the puzzle here, which is really the finishing piece for the left-hand side of our painting there, you're going to take either a small flat brush, a small round brush, and we're going to be putting in some leaves as I try and convince my cat to come lay on my lap. Come on. Come on. Get out of the way. Good job. Needy kitties, am I right? He's a crafty cat. So for your leaves, it's okay if they're a little bit transparent. You know, maybe these are new baby leaves. It's spring. You know, the mushrooms are just starting to grow on trees. You're basically going to just make a bunch of horizontal little lines with the paint to stand for some leaves. And like I said, it's okay if they're not super in focus. It's okay if they blend into what's around them because this isn't the focal part of our painting. The focal part of our painting is that little frog. So just add a few. Don't cover up all of the beautiful work that you did on your tree. Just strategically pick a few spots. And it's okay to just put some like loosely free form at the base of your tree. Maybe there's some shrubs and other things going on. But this serves to make that little tree kind of disappear into the background a little bit. So now we have a nice, beautiful focal point to start planting all of our mushrooms. So I'm going to clean out my brush. And for my mushrooms, I like to start by painting them in white. And they're kind of growing off the side of the tree. So every single one of them is a little cup shape. And that is the best way I can think of to describe this whole painting is that all those mushrooms are little cup-shaped dips. So it's easier to see the shape if you paint in a solid color to start, which is why I always start this way. And if you are trying to copy the exact shapes that I'm making, don't forget, you do have the ability to pause, take a break, reassess. You want your mushrooms to be a solid color. So the white also serves to kind of prime them for that. There should be spaces where you can kind of see through so that you don't lose all of that beautiful texture of your tree that you painted. And some of these shapes aren't really going to look like anything until we start to give them other layers of color. For example, there's two mushrooms here. There's two mushrooms in this painting and a third one over here, and you just cannot see that until you paint the colors. They just look like a big blob. This mushroom is kind of the important one because this is the one that's going to get your little frog. But of course, you could change where your little frog is located. If you have a mushroom that you're very fond of, he can absolutely live there instead. This is one of those things that as I'm painting in real time, this is about how quickly I painted this painting when I first made it because as I came up with all the details, I just kept being like, oh, this is so cute. Oh, this is so cute. Let me add this. This would be cute too. And I just kind of never stopped. So um, if you're wondering how I know how to move the brush, it's because this is about as quickly as I move when I come up with new art for you all. Uh, when I worked at a, a paint studio, I used to tell people, I have to be able to paint it in 20 to 30 minutes so I can teach it to you and you can paint it for an hour or two hours, however long our classes were, I forget. But if you're wondering why artists move so quickly, it's because we practice all the time. So um, speaking of practice, there are other tutorials on this YouTube channel for various different things. So if you're interested in learning other techniques to paint other styles of painting with me, Lindsay, 
you can absolutely take a look. And there are multitudes of crafts for that as well. So don't be afraid to visit me on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, at one point in time, I had a Twitter, but I don't think it's active anymore. And I do have a TikTok account. So there's other videos there too as well, kind of short mini tutorials. So if you're enjoying this, consider that. So to fill in the color on your mushrooms, you're going to want to make sure that you have a light value along the top. You have a middle value, which incorporates some of that ochre, and then a dark value, which is going to be brown in that ochre or black in that ochre. It's up to you for your shadow along the very bottom. So what I usually do is mix some pure yellow and white and just take my brush and run it along the top edge of every single mushroom. The mushrooms that are more cup shaped, you should kind of come down in the middle a little bit. But this pretty much tells your eye how much space you have left to work with and which mushrooms are touching which mushrooms. So, like this mushroom that's going to be two different mushrooms, the one in the back, I'm going to leave a little bit more white. This one's going to have a defined edge and so on. And you just kind of keep going until you get all the way down to the bottom edge. I have spots on my canvas that are still a bit wet and layering the paint is certainly not helping that. So you're going to see some smudging. If you start to pick up your tree texture or anything like that and you're not enjoying it, uh, you can use a hairdryer to set your painting a little bit more quickly, or you can just take a break and come back. So your middle range is going to be a little bit of that golden ochre. You can mix some yellow in with it. Find a color that makes you happy and add that in underneath. These are really, really quick mushrooms to paint. You could, of course, with all my tutorials, go back in and add all the detail that you want. I try to make it really flexible because some people are simplistic painters. They do want the instant gratification of seeing what they made in front of them. And sometimes they decide to go back and add more detail and sometimes they don't. And that's okay. Everybody's different. So I like to teach it in a way where you can complete this painting really quickly. And then if you want to, you have the skills to go back and add more. So basically with art, the more shades of color you add, the cooler people are going to think your artwork is. That's it. That's the big secret. That's what you're paying for. So if you just kept adding different hues of mushroom colors here, this painting would just get prettier and prettier. We've already got some great values going on and moving quickly like this while your paint is still wet is a really great way to get a multitude of values and hues as well because your paint is going to naturally want to blend and kind of do its own thing on top of the other paint that's near it, which makes your job really easy. If you were to do this and let every layer dry, then you have harder lines between and there's not as much blending. So that's why I paint the way I paint. So for the freckles, your mushrooms kind of have these spots on them, or at least mine do. You don't have to put them if you don't want to, but if you think they're cute, you're going to mix a color that's slightly darker than what you used for your tree stripes. And you're going to pick a few mushrooms to put that on. And we're just using a small brush and we're just dot, dot, dotting here. Only the mushrooms that you really want the audience to believe are kind of tilting toward the camera. So we're not going to touch the mushroom that has the little froggy guy in there because we want that mushroom to be tilting up kind of like a little seat so that he has some place to rest. So we're not touching that mushroom in particular. 
And then some of the immature mushrooms down here, some of the very tiny ones, would not have any spots for spores either. So pretty much the biggest mushrooms are what you want to add those dots to. So we have mushrooms in record time. So I'm going to show you up close the less simplified version. So this is a version where I did sit there and I mixed multitudes of different colors for those yellows and oranges and brown colors. So if you need to pause on this to get some inspiration for how your mushroom should be colored, you absolutely can. But also, this version is very simple. It doesn't look this simple from far away, but now that I'm holding it up to you, you can see there's nowhere near as much blending as the previous version, but from far away, it looks the same. So if you like to keep your paintings simple, they still come out beautifully with Lindsay's Craft Studio. I give you instructions about how to do both. So the last piece of the puzzle here is this frog guy, and I want you guys to be able to see. So the studio cat is getting put on the floor since he keeps interrupting my camera stream. And then you guys can't see. So the first thing you want to do when you are making any kind of froggy shape, um, I am taking a little bit of white and mixing it with a little bit of my lighter green, not enough to really change the color but enough to make it less transparent because that green is pretty see-through. And I do want to be able to just put one layer of this on and then be done because I don't have all the time in the world. So if you want to kind of sketch this out first with your paint and then do multiple layers, you absolutely can. So this is kind of a froggy face shape. I would describe this as a rounded square. And once you have that shape, you're actually going to add two little bumps on the upper left and upper right hand side. Just trust me on that. And then you can actually give him some shoulders once you finish. So you kind of have this weird, it almost looks like a, like a gummy bear sitting there. It's kind of a weird shape. If you watch Bob's Burgers, you know what I'm thinking of with this color and this shape, but uh, I'll save you, I'll save you the exposition. Reminds me of a character from the show. You're also going to give him three little fingers, and it's up to you if you want to do those in light green or dark green. I usually do light green first just to get them in place. And they tend to sit with their arms pretty far apart, frogs. So I put one hand to the left of the face and one hand to the right, kind of on the shoulder there. Your eyes should be on the sides of the head because this is a frog. So you want to paint a very long, skinny oval for your left eye, not a circle facing you, skinny oval. And then your right eye, because this guy is turned toward the camera a little bit, can be a little less oval, but still not a circle. And you also want to give him a little froggy mouth. And I do that with black paint at this point in time. And then I clean my brush and I kind of smudge it a little bit so that you get a nice shadow effect. For the top of the head, you can take your regular green and put a couple of dots. I wouldn't come down too far onto his face because they just tend to have texture on the top, like their forehead, where your forehead would be. And then I have a tendency to outline the shapes. So just give a little bit of coloring to that little triangle that's his shoulder to kind of make it look more frog-like. And you can kind of do the same thing on the other side of the face if you want to, just to make it pop out a little bit. If you're having trouble seeing those fingers, you could always go back in and add a little bit of dark green, just kind of like a 
a little bit of texture. You could skip fingers. Frogs have different colors to them. They have lumps and bumps, and they're super cute. And they get even cuter when you rinse your brush, switch over to white paint, and you're gonna add two shine dots into each eye. I like to make the top one a little bit longer and the bottom one a little bit smaller. And I'm going to hold this very detailed frog up again for you to see in case you want to pause and paint this little guy. Because this guy I took a ton of time with. Super, super cute. And then this guy is the simpler version. You can see there's not as many layers of paint. Uh, and there's not as many different colors of green. But it still looks like a tree frog. And it's still really cute. And with that, we have completed this painting in record speed, lightning time. I am sure that you had to pause a few times, and that is okay. Thank you guys for humoring me on that. I appreciate your patience and your flexibility. And I appreciate all of you that are tuning in to watch this a little bit earlier than 6.30 on Wednesday, April 26, 2023, because I have a family commitment to get to that got moved from another day. So that is why I am so early. And like I said, I appreciate all of you more than you know. I appreciate getting to see your artwork. So when you're finished, please follow the instructions in the description of this stream to tag your photo so that I can see it or share your photo with me on Facebook. If you feel like leaving me a review, I absolutely do appreciate them. I strive for five stars. Um, I know it's not a perfect system because this was supposed to be live, but I'm sure that you still had fun just like I have fun teaching you all, and I know you're all going to enjoy this tutorial so much, even if it wasn't exactly what I envisioned. And I will see you again next Wednesday, hopefully at 6.30 and hopefully live for Mare Meadow. So if you enjoyed this, you were worried it would be complicated, and it wasn't, trust me when I say this beautiful painting is going to be just as easy and just as gorgeous in your home. So I hope to see you at another Lindsay's Craft Studio event very soon. If you are finding me on YouTube alone, don't forget to visit me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok since there's content that's different across all four of these social media platforms. Uh, thank you. Don't forget to pass in those donations. All of it is appreciated. There's instructions in the comments and in the description for the video for how to do that. And I will see you at another Lindsay's Craft Studio event very, very soon. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you for painting along. Happy spring.